Okay, this is the unboxing of my Epiphone 1962 Anniversary Sheraton in Natural Finish. This is the second one I've had from Dawson's Music. The first one arrived last Monday and the neck or the headstock was entirely separated from the neck due to the fact that these guitars do seem very, very thin and weak at that point. So I sent it back and they've shipped me another one. The only thing is that there's, I think, only a couple of these now left in the country. They're supposed to be restricted to an issue of 1,962, um, although 1,961 must be in existence now, hence the due to that broken one. Um, so I thought I'd give Dawson's a, a second chance. So it's arrived this morning by couriers. The one last week was wrapped in a black bag, so concealing what the contents were. And this one's come like this, saying, I'm an Epiphone guitar. If you want to steal me, you know what's inside. Because they kindly described the model number on the side. Anyway, there it is. So it's been through the, uh, the battering ground of the courier's hub and all the rest of it. So you can see here that um, that part's already been crushed at some time or another in the life of the box. Um, as has this side. So my expectations aren't very high. I did tell Dawson's that it would be a good idea when sending the second one, this one, to pack underneath the headstock where it rests on that little box inside its case uh, with the hope that that would stop the headstock flying off when any sort of pressure was a, or kinetic energy was applied to it in transit. So. These have actually been on display, so if they're not damaged, they could perhaps be a little bit shop soiled. Who knows? Um, well, they will have been in the shop, that's for sure. So I had no option. Um, there's no such thing as a brand new one in circulation. I don't think Epiphone are going to make more than 1,962. Um, this same case is the last one I have, which seems to be the official case. It's supposed to be period. Period correct. Okay. Well, the moment of truth has arrived. Let's just have a look at the case, which seems to be okay. I can't see any big dings or scratches on it. Um, it's just a question of what the guitar is going to look like. When we do the reveal. Okay. There we go. Let's see what greets us. That's the headstock, which, okay, it's period correct, which means it is quite big and chunky. With those machine heads. It's got some detailing down the side on the fretboard. You can see that sort of inlay down both edges. Don't know what that is, but um, whether it's faux or real, these inlays aren't bad. Quite pretty. There's the body. I can't see any big dings yet. Let's just lift it out and see what happens. Right, well, there's any sign of stress on this neck. I can't see any because some people online on the Epiphone forums have posted pictures of, of cracked lacquer here, which is a precursor to the thing snapping off. This is where the brake was complete. Over here, this is where the brake was complete on my first attempt to buy this guitar from Dawson's. Let's just have a look at the back because if it's been in the shop, that's where people would have been 
scratching it and damaging it as they attempt to play Stairway to Heaven or Day Tripper or whatever it is they're a saying on a Saturday afternoon. Right, well, she seems to be intact. But we'll examine it a lot further. Let's just put her down there for a minute. Well, let's put her on the deck and make a mental note not to step on it. Let's see if we've got the correct case candy. Um, yeah, you always get Epiphone sticker and a, a poster. Um, trust Rod Allen key. Lock for the case. Inverted commas. Um, Authentication certificate. Twelve oh nine. Hmm. I wonder what that means. Is this number one thousand two hundred and nine? The one that arrived smashed last week was number eight hundred and sixty-six. Let me see if I can see inside here. What does that say? <laughs> no, this is actually 867. Um, the one after, the one that came last week that was damaged. Okay, well, I'm going to stop videoing and um, make a detailed examination of the guitar. It'll obviously need a setup. I haven't bought a new guitar yet off any shop, even the shops that claim they uh, do a full setup. Um, and found that it was given what I would call a full setup. I shall take this to my usual, usual guitar tech, great chap called Peter Allen of Guitar Technical Services. And he's based in Warwick, which isn't far away from me. So he fettles all my guitars, so he, he'll examine the, the frets, smooth them out, level them off, check the relief, truss rod intonation, the whole shooting match. Um, it's not something I like to do myself. Uh, some guys out there, you enjoy doing that sort of thing, but I'd rather Peter had it. Okay, so I shall report back um, and let you know if there's any major defects that I spot on this baby. Um, these are... This is called the Frequencator Bridge, period correct. What it's supposed to do is enable string bending to be a bit easier, given that the strings, if they went all the way down to the tailpiece, uh, I understand that the bending of the strings, would, of the, the treble strings, would be a lot harder. We'll see. Uh, so that's why they brought that up there. I must admit, I didn't quite understand that. I don't know the technology of all this stuff, but I would have thought that the degree of bendiness or otherwise was determined between this point and the and the point at the other end um, the nut, nut and bridge, but don't put snotty comments on the video I don't know what uh, whether it is just one of those mojo things or not. Anyway it looks kind of sweet. All I've got to do is make sure I never accidentally swing the guitar around and bang it on the neck on this ex extremely weak point. It's weak, by the way, because the wood is mahogany and also because the neck is so thin, which is great from a playing point of view. Um, but I understand from forums, etc., that this is why after 1962, when this, the original was supposed to have made of these, they, Gibson introduced the idea of the volute um, to make this into a, a, more, a stronger joint. So there we are. Made in, handcrafted in, handcrafted in China. There we are.
I've got a number of Epiphones, Flying V, um, and a couple of others. And I do find with Epiphone they're good value for money. Um, but you have to be aware that you can get a Monday and a Friday guitar, or you might get a very nice Wednesday one. You can uh, read reviews of users buying Epiphones and either giving them a five star or giving them uh, a one star. So it depends if you get a good one. Let's see if this is a, a good one. I, I hope it is. We'll see. Peter Allen, my guitar tech, will no doubt soon tell me when he's uh, done some fettling on it as to whether it's a good one or not. Um, okay. More and on. Um, perhaps we'll try to do another video after it's been set up by Peter and then um, I'll try and do a video of what what she sounds like. Meanwhile, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Okay, too good to be true department. Just discovered that the case rivets on this one hinge. I buggered. For our American friends that means broken. So I'll just have to go back to Dawson's on that, but it's better to have the case buggered than, uh, than the guitar.